my topic is on leader. A leader is someone that brings light to people, illuminates, a captain, someone in front. And that's what we're going to be talking about tonight. I'm going to use the Bible as my guidebook on leadership because that's what I've used personally all these years. I've used the Bible not only to lead in the world of um, Christianity, but also in my business. So many of the, um, I guess, the qualities that I've learned have come from spiritual training. And I want to talk to you about leadership. It's not only in our volunteer world, our spiritual world, but it's in the world that we live in, our day-to-day, -day, our jobs, schooling, people around us. Everybody's looking for leaders. It seems like there's a lack of good leaders. Now, how do you know that you are a leader Maybe God has spoken to you, but let me tell you some ways that, that, that some of our biblical leaders have. Abraham was called to be a leader by God himself. Abraham was called a friend of God. And God met with Abraham more than once. He came and visited him. He even ate with him. That's what the Bible says. Aaron, it was Moses, who told Aaron that he needed to be a leader. Moses heard from God and told Aaron, Aaron, you need to be a leader. And Aaron was a great leader. And Joseph, he learned that he was a leader by a dream. In Genesis 37, he had a dream and God called him to be a leader. Jacob was a leader by the hand of the Lord being upon him. Moses was called by an angel. An angel appeared to Moses. And Samuel, Samuel was a child who heard God's voice while he was laying in bed at nighttime in the dark in the quiet. He literally heard an audible voice of God. These are examples of different ways that we find that we are called to be a leader. Now, there's five reasons why we need leadership, especially spiritual leadership. We're in a world where it's, it seems to be dark and, and there's a lot of hopelessness and despair and stress and fear. Oh, my goodness. There's like wars wanting to break out all over the world. There's all kinds of oppressions here and there. People are looking for people who are not afraid. People who can hear God say, keep moving forward. The Lord Jesus spent most of his time training just 12 men, the 12 disciples. Do you know 33 to 34 days in the Gospels where, where, where Jesus was, was speaking to other people and the rest of the time he was training the 12, the 12 people around him the 12 people that he was going to leave to bring Christianity to a world. Christianity did not exist until Jesus came and, and had the 12 disciples. And he walked with them and talked with them and told them what to do. And when he left, they literally spread the, the word of Christianity to the whole world. It didn't exist until Jesus came. So Jesus spent a lot of time without biblical leadership or spiritual leadership, or let, let me just put it like this, without godly examples or goodly examples or ethical examples, then people just fall into doing whatever. They don't have a someone to look to that this is the way it should be done. But, you know, our world is a do-it-if-it-feels-good society. You know, and that is, you know, part of rebellion. So leadership is necessary, ethical, honest, integrity. That type of leadership is so necessary, especially in our day. Sometimes
sometimes leaders blame people for the problems that exist around them. You know, parents say it's the kids or uh, church leaders or spiritual leaders say it's the people. But really, leaders are the ones that lead. And they are the ones that help people to see the way things should be done. And then a lot of times methods that people use in leadership aren't necessarily ethical or moral or full of integrity. And therefore, they are not seeing good leadership, so they have a role model. You know, we are known by the people that we hang with, the people around us. If you want to know what kind of person you are, then you should be thinking about the people that you are hanging out with. Another is leaders who are not spiritually discerned don't necessarily meet the, pe the needs of people who follow them. So in other words, we need to get our life in order, get our priorities straight, and be a good leader, and then people will see that. You know, it, it's like this. It's not what people hear us do. It's what they see us do. I'm talking about leadership in all forms. Parents leading their children, business managers leading their company, um, volunteers leading people to do good things in their community. I'm going to give you a recommendation. The book of Proverbs is the wise book in the entire Bible. It's the book of wisdom. Read a chapter a day or read a verse a day. Try to memorize something out of that book of wisdom. Again, I'm talking about leadership. Leadership is one who goes ahead and who acts as a guiding force, who motivates people toward a common goal, who draws people to a course of action, who can persuade people to do what they need to do, who gives direction to others, who works and uses their efforts to coordinate. One who leads others by living an example. That's what a leader is. Now, in the Bible, there's a, there are like five main leaders. So if you're here and you are a spiritual leader, and not only a leader in like your family, your job, your community. The five spiritual leaderships are apostle, evangelist, teacher, prophet, and pastor. All of them prepare others, and all of them are ne necessary. They therefore help us perfect ourselves or do better. I mean, like we never really arrive at perfection. It's something that we're constantly working on. Is our leadership. Not only that, our personality. You know, at that women's conference, um, I learned so many things from so many people. The, the leadership and the way they handled and did things, I learned so much. Leaders should use discernment. Let's look at others and see their potential. Take a moment to look and see the potential of others. And don't always go by what your eyes can see. Focus on the positive areas in that person. Then help them build those positive areas. I'm talking about leadership. Challenge that person to fulfill their potential and develop the gifts that God has given to them. We all are born with gifts. A leader will say, okay, I'm working with this team. I'm going to figure out how I can help them build and use their gifts. A leader must be willing not to be frustrated with people 
and not give up on them. Everyone makes mistakes, so we have to encourage each other. I'm sure, um, you know, as leaders, we're in front of people, our mistakes are made so visible many times to others. But when you're with a team of other leaders, instead of them saying, oh, you did this or you did that, other leaders will just pick up the slack. They're like, oh, you know, Kelly didn't get, didn't get this done. She said she was going to do this and she may have forgot. So let me just do it for her. That's a leader. Another thing that a leader does is they plant a vision in the heart of those who follow. They plant a vision. Vision is what they can see. Where are we going? What are we doing? You know, in, in my business and in our ministry, I'm always trying to see, oh, Lord, where am I going with this? And yes, I pray about my business. I pray for the people that I work with. Another thing a leader does is they give opportunity for development to others. In other words, they, you may assign a task to them and you give them an opportunity to use their talents, their abilities, and they, they are able to develop themselves. We must give confidence to those who work around us. We've got to build them up and give them confidence. They're learning. And then we want to help them to eventually establish their own position uh, if it's in the secular world or their ministry if it's in the church world. I have a saying, and the saying is you train a dog, but you lead people by example. True leaders are not domineering leaders. Instead, they lead by example. I'm going to tell you some characteristics of a true leader. They concentrate on influencing from within by encouraging, inspiring, and motivating. They encourage, they inspire, and they motivate. A true leader enjoys a good relationship by showing respect to those who work around them. A true leader works with co-workers in achieving the long-term goals with care and concern for those working with the leader. A true leader aims to make himself unnecessary. Training to make yourself unnecessary means you are a successful leader. You have trained yourself out of a job. A true leader values individuals, encourages and praises them rather than condemn them or, you know, constantly belittle them. A true leader will value them and encourage them. A true de leader desires, desires power to work with people, not power over people. That's what a true leader does. A true leader is considerate of others at all times. A true leader liberates, encourages, Ideas and participation. That's what a true leader does. I'd like to say that all, most, all of those things I saw with my own eyes at our women's conference. I saw that many of you have a heart of a leader. But here we are now. We're, um, most of us, not all of us, but most of us are, are past our halfway life point we have. And so now we need to look for the next generation. And we need to put some stuff in that generation, some leadership, some integrity, some um, some of these things. We need to encourage, we need to enable, we need to help, we need to teach them by leading by example. And as Sue said, 
um, many of the ladies that came to the conference, they were, they were just so pleasant and they expressed such a gratitude for our carrying on this event and making it where they could afford it. There are a lot more opportunities that we need to step up to. We need to, um, we need to work on another conference, a virtual conference that encompass other women that would enjoy the, enjoy the fellowship and the strengthening and the encouraging that came at this last conference. So I wanted to speak to you all today about your leadership ability. Many of you just haven't had the opportunity to show what a great leader you are. And that conference gave you an opportunity to show strong your skills of leadership. And I want to say I'm very proud of you. Every one of you did an amazing job. But we have more work to do. There are women that came to this conference and there are other women um, that will come in the future. So we need to pray for the opportunity and empower the next generation to do things as well.